Hallelujah. 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 Don't break the My topic for today is God will fulfill his promise in your life. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Starting from verse 1 to 4. I'm not going to go into details reading all these chapters, but please take note of them. When God remembered you, people will think you are crazy, stupid, or some will say you don't know your rights. Some will think in the modern world that you need to see a psych doctor. Some will even say, is this scientifically proved? You don't need to know all that because God did not need a doctor, a scientist, or even a priest to fulfill his promises. When God called Abraham, God told him to leave his people. In these days, we will say, how can I leave my people? Remember, he left everything. He only took the most important thing in his life, his wife, and one relation, his nephew. When God called you to move, you will remember your bank account. You remember your investment. Remember friends and everything that is important to you. It will not make sense why you should abandon your house and move. Why you should abandon everything that you have worked for and move. Because God is not going to give you the details. All you have to do is to obey command. Let's look at the story of Joseph. Joseph had a dream that his brothers will come and bow down to him. And when that dream was coming to fulfillment, what happened? These same brothers that are supposed to worship him ripped the expensive clothes of many colors that the father did for him, put him in a pit, and sold him into slavery. Are you in that comfortable zone that you are very comfortable, rich-wise, you have money, you have all the job, you have what it takes to be a human being? All of a sudden, you find yourself ripped off your wealth, thrown in the uh, pitch, and sold into slavery. Remember the road to success. When God called you, it's never an easy job. As if the, the way is getting better for Joseph, he found himself in Pharaoh's house. Of course, the White House, there will be food at least, no bills, nothing. Another trial came, Pharaoh's wife. Did Joseph give in? No, he remembered his promise. He remembered God has promised him. He remembered that he has a vision, he has a purpose. Did he de defeat Potter's wife? Of course, he flee. Do you flee when problem comes, when trial comes? Yes, you have to, because God is going to fulfill his promise in your life. Amen. As if that wasn't enough, he was accused. He was thrown into jail. While in jail, there is one thing that Joseph did not do. He did not forget his God. He keep being good. He keep being nice. Even to the people that threw him in jail, that was a point of contact for Joseph. Because if he has not been good, the dream that he was interpreting wouldn't have come to him. God would have hidden himself from him. He wouldn't have found any way out. Being good for these same people that throw him in jail, he interpreted the dream. That's when he sowed this, the seed of freedom. He went to Pharaoh's, uh, the prisoner who was in prison with him, went back and remembered the good deed of Joseph when the appointed time came. He went back to his glory, and we all know the story, how everything became rosy. He was the top 
or I would say the most powerful man in the world, then, then there comes another trial. Now, from the people that sold him into slavery, they came. He recognized them. They did not recognize him. Joseph would have said, you, you will die today. They don't know him. He would have pretended that he didn't know them and put them to jail and pay them back. Rather, he forgave them. Do you forgive those that did bad to you or do you pay them back? Remember, when you are paying back, you are stopping your own progress. Another person that touched my heart is Moses. Moses was called to free the Israelites. Remember, he was born when nobody is surviving, when the, all the men of the Israelites were not surviving. But God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Yep. Yes. He provided that basket. He provided Miriam and uh, Pharaoh's daughter to fulfill his promise in our lives. To cut this long story short, Moses passed through those orders. And God came back to him and called him. He said, who am I that I should go? Sometimes you may think that you don't have what it takes to preach the word of God. But remember, God will not start any job. He cannot finish. Before he calls you, he knows that he has made all the available resources for you. Before God said go, he had made all those crooked ways straight. Yes. Before God said go, he has stopped all those foreclosures. He has stopped all those bill collectors in your life. Hallelujah. Remember that God does not start any job he cannot finish. Moses succeeded in bringing the Israelites out. Are you going to your promised land? Remember, there will be Red Sea. Remember, there will be Jordan River. Remember, there will be walls of Jericho. Remember, there won't be any food in the wilderness. When you hold on to all this and just look onto the promises of God, you will succeed. Amen. Let us look at the birth of Jesus Christ. I believe every woman here, when you read the story of Mary, you will say, ah, I wish I'm Mary. But let's go back to what Mary went through before we all wish we are Mary. In a land where you must remain a virgin before you get married. An angel came to you and said, you know what, you are going to get pregnant. Did you remember what your family would say, what your mother would say, who would disown you and who would like you? Mary accepted without any question asked. Let's look at the men. This is a man, a woman that you are going to marry. She's supposed to be a virgin. An angel came to you and said, you know what? That your wife, somebody else has slept with her. You will say, yeah, that's the end of it. <laughs> but remember that Joseph did not ask any question. He accepted it. Do you accept your condition and try to look at the better part of it? Or do you keep on asking, why me? If not you, who else? <laughs> Joseph took his wife and his child. Oh, it's God. Nothing will happen. There comes another trial. Herod was killing everybody. This is God. He has the power to say, Herod died. But he did not do it. He instructed Joseph to flee because God has to show his good glory. Joseph flee from uh, Canaan to Egypt and hide. Some of us have run here to hide. Some of us has come here to say, God, here am I, hide me. While you are here hiding, are you asking questions or are you looking on to God? You might say because he's God, God will, will, will not have any temptation. 
Yes, you will have some temptations. Not some, several temptations. Because Christ did. He was tempted. He passed through all the condemnations. All the accusations. The lied against him. Oh, they lie against me. I will never forgive them. Oh, Christ was lied against. He was crucified, put to death for a sin he did not commit. How many of us have said, how dare they think I would do such thing? Yes, they accuse Christ. So when the trials and temptation comes, remember that God went, to, God went through that too. You are a preacher. You preach, you pray, you touch, you prophesy, you do everything. Remember the early Christians. How many of them were stoned to death? How many of them were put to prison? Because you are a Celestian, I'm going to a, a Holy Spirit church. It's a white garment church. They say miracle happens there. And why haven't I received that miracle? Because you are, a you are the chosen one of God. Remember that God only allowed trials to the righteous one and to the whole, those he loves. If God doesn't love you, trial doesn't come to your way. So if you are going all smoothly and nothing is stopping you, nothing is harming you, you better go back and ask God, why don't you love me? Because when God loves you, he has to shape you in his own way. Also remember that God will never destroy this world because of you. God said, I honor my word more than anything. When God has promised you, and that thing is not coming to fulfillment, ask yourself, God said, my word will not go out and come back to me unaccomplished. It is better for heaven and earth to come to an end. Now the question remains. Is God going to destroy this world because of mercy? Is God going to destroy this world because of anybody sitting here going through trial? If God has promised you, it will be done. Amen. You better believe it because it's going to be done. Amen. And I am telling you now that even your sin is not enough to stop God's work. Yes. Whatever you think you have done, whatever you think that is coming after you or that is attacking you, Remember that God's word will not go back to him unfulfilled. That job you are looking for, that child you are looking for, that unemployment, that foreclosure, that illness, that stubborn child, whatever you think that you are going through today that is causing you to ask God, why me? That is causing you to ask God, where am I? Remember, the word of God must come to fruition. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.